What's up, guys? John here, and it's Tight Net Time with Rachel Daniels. What's up, guys? We're back for another awesome episode. Yes, yes. With yes. my favorite man, John. Aww. Today, we're going to talk about something super important. A lot of people don't know what it is yes. or why it's so important. Yes. Um, we're going to talk about cortisol and cortisol. sleep. They cortisol. coincide. Absolutely. So, they're. It's only fitting that we talk about them together. Absolutely. And before we start off this episode, I want to make sure everybody knows out there, listen, at Type Medical Center, we don't judge anybody out there, but we can't condone um, unprescribed supplementation of any kind out there. I want to make sure everybody knows. Right. When they come to Type Medical Center, we do blood work on them or medical providers go into their stuff. If you're doing other things, we can't condone that or add on top of that we're here to get people healthy we want to give you guys great advice from our medical providers and help you guys get healthy and be the best you possibly can with what is prescribed so absolutely. that's just a little little absolutely uh, a thing out there i want to throw out there but listen cortisol is a big big thing right right so cortisol is obviously the stress hormone yes it's your body's main stress hormone you can think of it as like Sort of your body's alarm system. It is the system. alarm system. For it rings sure. the alarm. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Ring the alarm, like the Beyonce song. So Yeah. Yeah, so anytime, like, I guess we could go back to giving a good example of maybe the beginning of the times where humans had yes. a little bit of scarier existence. Yes. We had dinosaurs running around. We yes. had to fight. We almost probably died every day. You know, For sure. Type thing. So our bodies had this hormone cortisol and we still have it today even yeah. though we've evolved and maybe have not as many significant um physical harm stressors yeah. and threats in our life but this was a response um that we've had since the beginning of the time as our stress hormone so when Absolutely. some stressful or traumatic situation happened maybe then you were going to get attacked by a massive animal maybe now you're going to get yeah. tiger maybe now you're going to get robbed um, yes. at gunpoint or yeah. something like that your body sends out this a release of cortisol yep. and that is going to shut down other systems and functions in your body and pretty much put you in survival mode until yep. the threat is alleviated yep. and once it is usually your cortisol cortisol levels should go back to normal but as we know that's not always the case no definitely not see with cortisol it, you know there's good stresses and bad stresses out there and we're gonna have these every day as people right and the more high stressful situations you're in, this one possibly cortisol goes up. Now the fight or flight scenario, right. right? This is like, this does go back to when we were cavemen and we were trying to get our food and we were worried about dinosaurs or saber tooth tigers <laughs> dragging us down or when were we gonna get our last meal? Uh, so at that point, listen, it it's, comes from the adrenal glands. It's a little triangle shaped above the kidneys. And this is where cortisol comes from. So. You know, when we go through these day-to-day -day things, right? Mm -hmm. We have our job, we have kids possibly, we're training for a competition, whatever it is, this can create cortisol. And cortisol is a good thing and a bad thing. So we wanna make sure everything is harmonic balance. Yes, right, as long as it's in balance. Right, so, because when cortisol does go up, right? Cortisol, and this can go up from a number of different situations. It can cause a lot of negative things to happen to the body. Yeah. Um, acne. Weight yes. gain, can shut, mood, shut down your immune system, immune function, yeah, increase blood pressure, blood pressure. Um, <laughs> this is another big one. Release sugar, glucose into the blood system right. more. Um, it, it regulates your carbohydrates, your proteins, your fats in your body, right? The way that we use these different right. things. And when we get into that fight or flight scenario, mm -hmm. so what happens then is that at that point, our body, our brain in the hypothalamus, right, your pituitary, it basically says, hey, listen, everything that's not essential to the situation, forget about it. We've yeah. got to get past this situation because we got to survive. Right. So, you know, I mean, high cortisol could be like, listen, somebody's on a stranded on a desert island. They don't know when they're going to get their next meal. They're trying to get their next meal and they're going through all these stressful situations. Maybe the sun's burning them. Um, maybe there's things on the island they're trying to tackle like yeah. we talked about. You know, these are different things that could happen. You know, and even in the bodybuilding world, you know, we're we're putting our body under high stress levels, right? Absolutely. And your body doesn't necessarily, although we've evolved at time and we know that, you know, we're not getting chased by saber tooth tigers Thank anymore. God. And maybe if we're talking about that in a conversation, you'd say that's not as scary as um, getting ready for a bodybuilding competition or going through a divorce. 
Um, the threats seem significantly different. One obviously seems more immediate and scary, and it probably might be on the outside, but your body doesn't know really the difference. Just like when you're putting yourself, your body under trauma or stress of even a, a really hard training session mm-hmm. in the gym, um, your body doesn't know the difference between that or if you're, you know, in the threat of your life. Right. It's really just going off of uh, the trauma that it's receiving. So you might have higher cortisol. So you see a lot of times athletes are all, when they're getting close to a show, they're really yeah. trying to just zen out and do everything they can to relax and keep their stress down. And that's because they are aware of the fact that if their cortisol levels go up, especially when they're contest ready body wise, you know, that yeah. can lead to things like holding water, not processing proteins, fats and carbohydrates the, the right, right way. It can, you know, damage their immune system or make them vulnerable and they don't want, you know, you don't want to get um, any sort of illness at that point. So your body doesn't necessarily know the difference between the traumas um, that we might have perceived as something really significant <laughs> back in the dinosaur days versus today. But we do see a trend of, like John said, your body's always looking for homeostasis. So yeah. it's always, it's not like not having cortisol. That's not a good thing at all. No, if you have too low not. a cortisol, that can lead to really bad things. And if your cortisol is too high, that can lead to really bad things. Right. So how do we get a good amount of cortisol? And what do we do if we have too high or low cortisol? Right. So there's actually diseases out there, right? So cushion disease means you have high cortisol levels all the time. It's like super high. Low cortisol or not producing cortisol, that is Addison's disease. Right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, in everything you want to check with a medical provider, you can blood test for cortisol levels to see where they're at. You know, we can help you out here at Type Medical Center as far as blood testing to see where it's at. But, you know, having the good balance. So if you're in very, very high stressful situations through your job or your training or whatever it may be, listen, just life, you're going through a, a serious divorce. I, I know people that have went through this mm-hmm. scenario where you know the spouse is just hitting them trying to hit them in every different way this is stressful they got the job they got the kids you know they're trying to do these other things and it's just all this stress and they're freaking out at night um you know with this their cortisol levels might be out of balance or out of whack and right. this could cause them other health issues so like listen what do i do well, how do i get this like cortisol down and really like if your cortisol is super high like that and you don't have a disease like you know like cushion's disease mm-hmm. you know one different thing that I do, and I think we were talking about it, was like your meditation or breathing to a certain extent, right? Exactly. Get your body back in that relaxed state so you can convince your body I'm not in a threatening fight or flight mode. Like, we don't have to freak out. Right. Everything's fine. You know, unstressful situations, things that bring you joy without any stress. Yes. Um, so for me, it would be laying on the beach. Yeah, laying on the beach. You know, I, I literally, even my meditations and my breathing, I go, mm, I don't go, mm, like that. But I can literally close my eyes. I can think that I'm at the beach because that's my, that's my happy place. Feet are in the sand. I can literally listen to the waves just in my mind. You got to take yourself to this place, right? Mm-hmm. And that will literally lower blood pressure. It'll help yeah. your heart rate, and it usually does. Right, and that's a good point. It's not. It's not like necessarily saying you have to, you know, envision something and do all oh, this like no, yoga stuff. That's. That, no. But the point of meditation in general is it, it. It does have an impact on your body in the sense that you can learn to control your breathing, which in turn can help you control your heart rate and get it steady. Yeah. And in turn, that's going to affect your blood pressure. And in turn, so all these things tie together Absolutely. Um, in pertaining to your stress. And it's a good, if you can get those things under control, those also are going to help you. You know, we're never going to get rid of our stressors. It's never, never like we're not going to live in a never. world where everything's going to be fine. So it's about how are we developing a healthy coping mechanisms to our stressors so we're not just always freaking out and going from zero to fight or flight yes. all the time and having these random episodes of huge doses of cortisol that we have to yeah. then calm back down. I mean, because, you know, with, with cortisol, it affects a lot of different things. It can affect appetite, like we talked about mood before. Weight loss. Weight, weight loss, weight gain. So, I mean, you can mm-hmm. go in a number of different directions, you know, right. with this sleep pattern. Sleep is huge. You know, your wake cycles. I mm-hmm. mean, if that's affected, you know, if you're not getting enough sleep at night, this can mess with cortisol levels. Yeah, your mood. So, it literally, it, it goes hand in hand with everything that, that's going on in your body. I mean, it, literally, your body should be in homeostasis or harmonic balance. And we talk about this a lot with a lot of different things, but that's what everything is. Like everything just coincides with each other in the body. Mm-hmm. And you really just gotta have everything's back on track. So, 
you know, you, the, the thing is, is look for these different red flags. If you're having a lot of these different issues in life or problems, that's when you want to look at, you know, basically mm -hmm. to meditate or to do unstressful things. You right. Know? You got to set that time aside. It's not just stress, 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 because you're going to run yourself down and possibly cortisol goes up and you're going to have these issues. Now, low cortisol, that's a different story now. So if you're not producing enough cortisol, right? So check with your medical provider and go over these different things. But like, you know, different things that medical providers usually prescribe for low cortisol or Addison's disease, hydrocortisone, um, dexamethasone, and um, prednisone. Prednisone, Excuse yeah. me, I apologize, I have a brain, <laughs> brain fart there. So with these medications, they're not good either. You, you don't wanna be on those medications for long extended periods of time. Like dexamethasone, hydrocortisone, and prednisone, they can definitely affect mood. They can definitely make you gain weight and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So these are different things that you don't right. want to do either. It's just know? to help your body get back to homeostasis so that we can come off the medicine and we're, we can regulate internally on our own without the assistance Absolutely. of things like this. So anything extended for a long period of time, again, is maybe questionable. And you should always check with your medical provider because this is a case by case thing. Nobody's the same. That's right. Um, if your cortisol is too high, get like we said, getting rid of it is not going to solve the problem. Right. If it's too low, getting it too high isn't going to solve the problem. This is true. It's so all about balance, man. Everyone's different. So yeah. something that John said that is huge um, is sleep. Cortisol sleep. has a big effect on sleep, and sleep has a big effect on cortisol. So I know personally, if I don't get my eight hours at least of sleep a night i wake up the next day i'm cranky you know that's what we were talking about kind yeah. of you might have a little mood swings yep. you might not want to do anything because you're tired your motivation is off for sure. i feel like when i wake up and i don't get enough sleep i'm like a water balloon i feel bloated um and that is another thing cortisol will help you retain water yeah which is i don't think anyone wants to be no. bloated no uh, yeah, and it's probably not from all that fruit you ate the night before. It's <laughs> it might be from your lack of sleep. Yeah, and, and listen, and then this, you know, let's say your sleep is, is thrown off like this. Um, that's going to affect a lot of different things, too. And listen, mm -hmm. if you're trying to work out and you're trying to get results there, your body needs sleep. Your body needs sleep for brain function. So if you want to be good at your job the next day or whatever right. you're trying to do, you need sleep. And you know, good sleep can help cortisol, lower cortisol. Now, if you have high cortisol and stuff like this, this can make you lethargic. It can make you tired all day. You know, make like, you want to sleep all day, and that's not a good thing either. So too much sleep's not good either. Definitely right. not. Definitely not. So that's where you know, sleep is a, a big thing. That's when your body literally shuts down, recharges, tries to repair itself in these different ways. Mm -hmm. And I think sleep is one thing that's overlooked in a lot of different ways from a lot of different people. Absolutely. You know, from your average Joe that, that's trying to work a lot, you know, I'm not getting enough sleep. I'm just telling you guys that right now, like four mm -hmm. to five hours is probably not enough for the normal person. You want to usually get six to eight hours. Yeah. At least eight hours. And that's the, the normal um number usually they throw out there like eight hours of sleep that's what you've heard eight hours of sleep eight hours of sleep so you know if you're having these issues or even during the week so for me it's crazy because i have events like every weekend mm -hmm. so at that point like i, I try and then the, you know the kid and everything like that i want to make sure we're spending time with peter so right for me it's like maybe on a sunday i'll try to get some extra sleep or get those naps in. naps are super a great way to they try are. to get them in even they if really you just and even if I've, I sometimes I can't fall asleep all the way on a nap, but I'll just sit somewhere quiet and just breathe and That's close awesome. my eyes for like 20 minutes. And I might not have actually gone to sleep, but I always wake up feeling more yes. energized and relaxed yes. and more under control. So naps are super good. Super, super important. Good. Babies take naps all the time. They That's eat right. and sleep and they're always growing. And that's super important for development. Absolutely. So, and it, it's back to the basics that like you said, like eating, sleeping, like that, like that will help growth and, and help. Absolutely, repair. it'll help overall health. You know, mm -hmm. so that's another big thing was foods too. So make sure you're getting good foods because good food sources can help with your mood and possibly cortisol too as well. Like if you're eating toxic foods, mm -hmm. bad foods, you know, this is gonna put more stress on the body. Right? Yeah. And more stress can raise possible cortisol. I've levels. seen studies talking about how sweet potatoes are 
a good food to lower cortisol. Yeah? Um, yeah. So sometimes I do sweet potatoes before bed. I there don't know go. how much it helps, but right. like that's what I've read. That's so. what it's at. <laughs> no, and listen, things that bring you joy that aren't going to be harmful to you, these are different things to lower cortisol levels and to do stress, right? And some people, it's the gym. Like, right. it's iron therapy. Like, you know, we go, like, if I go there, like, that is my stress releaser. Like, right. you know, like, I go there and, like, literally I can zone out for 30, 45 minutes or possibly an hour if I get that much time. Yeah, right. And, uh, you know, I feel a hell of a lot better the next day. Like, I'm, like, ready to go. Or even afterwards, I'm like, man, I feel awesome. I feel great. You know, I got the blood flowing. And, and hopefully, at that point, this can be your de-stressor. Some people, it's reading a book. Mm-hmm. Some people, you know, it's maybe sitting and listening to music. You know, there's a lot of different things. So find out what makes you happy and what makes you relax. Right. Some people massages. Yeah. That's another good one. Or that means turning off your phone at a certain time before yes. you go to bed. I always try to turn my get away from my phone for like at least 30 minutes before I go to bed. Yeah. So that I'm in that place where I can just go to sleep and my brain's not registering all this electronic fluff. Well, or right when I'm trying to sleep. It's true because uh, even like you know the the blue lights that you know big things out there right now. So the, the blue blockers. The blue blockers. Yeah. You know I've everybody's got a them. pair of these here in the office. Yeah. And even Sharice got a pair now. So like I feel left out. Like I don't have a pair. But. <laughs> 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 you know, so I mean, you know, Fashion Nova selling these things. I, I mean, really they, they got to be selling a lot, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah. So, but this is true. We know from from studies that basically that you know that blue light that emulates will keep you up, and will keep you going. So you know, there's even a, a function on your iPhone where you can turn this off, mm-hmm. um, where it will take out that blue light, it's which like is night mode or yeah, something. Night mode's yeah. a good one. So. What's well, the same thing as like? There's studies that show if you're sleeping with a TV on, a lot of people are like, I can't fall asleep without a TV. And that may be so, but you're actually not getting as good of sleep as you could if that TV was off because you might be sleeping, but there are different phases of your sleep. So getting good quality sleep, um, your your brain is still processing and aware of the external noises and sounds and light, even if you're sleeping. So you might not be, you might be sleeping, but it's like, how good is your quality of sleep? It's the same with alcohol. There's yes. a lot of studies that show Disrupt. when you drink alcohol, you, you know, you're, you might be like, oh, I just passed out. I slept so long, but I feel like crap the next morning. And yeah. that's a lot of other factors too. But there's studies that show like the actual quality of sleep that you're getting when you have alcohol in your system is almost, it's like almost close to not sleeping at all and being awake. That's seriously, that, that's, that's a great thing to touch on. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of people do, they're like, oh, listen, I passed out. I should be feeling I slept better. 10 hours. I slept, slept till 11. I should, that's I don't know true. how much more I can sleep. Yeah. But it's, how is your quality of sleep? So that's a pretty good, pretty good clue uh, that it, maybe it's not how long you're sleeping, but the quality of your sleep that's impacting all of these things that we talked about the next 100%. day cortisol motivation mood energy yes all of it appetite all of that Ab- absolutely and you did you, you touched on a great point here there's different phases of sleep right you know and usually a trans five sleep is what you want yeah Deep exactly REM sleep right yeah you, you know and some people don't get that sleep even if they're starting to take medications to help them sleep like um like time lpm that one's mm-hmm. a big one out there. I know Sharice was using it before because she can get good sleep. So with that, you can start seeing like her eyes start moving. It's really weird. Like the flickering. The flickering. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. That means that your body, you're not all the way shut down, right? Yeah. When you start seeing that flickering and stuff like that, that's a, that's not a good state of sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, even, you know, just lately, like she'll leave the TV on uh, or I'll leave the TV on at night. And literally, I can hear in the background when I'm sleeping. It's almost like... You know, you're you're in that, like, almost sleeping, but you're not sleeping. Right, you're you know? still like a, you're still, yeah. You're still, like, uh-huh. you know what's going on around you, but you have your eyes closed. Right. It's it's really crazy, and, and you don't get proper rest, and you don't feel rested when you wake up. You don't. You know, and that's one thing that you guys have to look for. Like, when you're sleeping at night and you get up the next day, you should feel refreshed as long as... You haven't done anything, like you're not drinking alcohol the night before, mm-hmm. going crazy like that. Um, you have the TV off, you know, you're doing everything right. You're in this dark room, right? And that's that's the best thing you can do. Try to get all the light out because mm-hmm. your body and your your mind know these things. And that's where like melatonin comes into play yeah. and stuff like that. Anything that's stimulating you, whether it's a light or sound or any sensory thing, you have to be really aware of all the sensory things going on. It's true. You know, if you live in somewhere that there's a train going by all night or you live next to a major road where there's always traffic, you might not 
realize any of this stuff is affecting you, but your brain's a lot smarter than you are. Yep. And it's still awake when you're when you're not conscious and you're it's in true. your sleep. It it's is. It's true. It's paying attention. And that's, a, that's another good point to touch on because, like, when you're – so our bodies are trained, right? They're, they're awesome machines. And your body can recognize – you know when it should be going into sleep cycles like usually you know when the, the sun comes up your body is rising it knows it needs to be awake and then when it starts getting dark mm -hmm. that's when like melatonin is a hormone production, actually right melatonin right. production out there um gets released in the body and that's when you start getting tired and rested and you, you go to bed you know a lot of people they substitute right now melatonin and it's really crazy out there because melatonin is a hormone Mm -hmm. And it's sold like over the counter, right? And I see, I see people giving their kids melatonin to go to sleep. It's not a good thing. Like no. you don't want to like keep you know giving your body all these different things like to try to make it release more melatonin because that can mess up too your much cycle melatonin too. can keep you awake. This is true. Yeah, this is true. And then you're sensitive, you're, you're desensitized to a certain extent in your body, and it really doesn't know. So, yeah, it's that's really good. I mean, I think a lot of people they don't understand that or they don't really know they don't and I, di I didn't used to either and i used to i used to not have a like a bedtime i guess and i'm lucky that yeah. i've been able to get on a schedule where i i really do go to bed at around the same time every night yeah and it it took a while of doing it and, you know i had a lot of nights where i just stared at the ceiling when i was trying to get rid of the tv <laughs> i was trying to get rid of certain things but yeah now like in prep sometimes when i'm really deep in it i can get to the point where I wouldn't even need to set an alarm clock because my cycles are so good that I could, I would open my eyes like two, three minutes before my alarm would go off every morning. That's and it was thing. almost down to like the minute. It yeah. was so cool. And I'm like, wow, my body has, is my internal clock is literally so on with my sleep now. Yep. And I would realize I would not be sleeping 10, 11, 12 hours like I did in college when I partied and stuff. But, oh, yeah. I remember those but days. I, those days I was always like, <laughs> I need like at least an hour to like get myself out of bed. I need to go through like 30 <laughs> alarms. You know, it was like I this do. whole process. And, but, but nowadays I wake up and when my eyes open, if I got a good night's sleep and with none of the external factors, it's kind of just like I'm awake. Like, I'm awake and I'm ready to go. It's not like yeah. this, like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> not right. I never used bed. to be a morning person ever. Yeah. And now I'm just like, well, it's fine. I'm good. Let's it's, go. It's so true. Like, your, your body it wants a, a schedule. It does. And the be better you can get in that schedule and routine, the better you're going to be overall, health-wise, your right. gains, whatever it is, your brain function. Like, you're going to have this. It's going to be running optimal. Yeah. You know, your body wants it. When you start throwing your sleep schedule off, so even people that, like, during the week, they have this really tight regimen of sleep schedule, right? Because they got to work and they have the kids and mm -hmm. all that, so they have it right on point there. And then they get to the weekend. <laughs> yeah, it's like, whatever. And, yeah, <laughs> so basically you're throwing your sleep schedule off, and that's why, you know, you might not feel the best, like, when you're waking up, like, on Saturday because you stayed up all night on Friday. And then all week you're trying to, like... You're catching up. Yeah, and it's back to what we said about the fight or flight thing. So just think about that. That's your body's alarm system. So your body is always trying. Your your body is the happiest when it feels the safest. Yes. Right? Yes. It's not going to compensate. It's not going to shut things down. Yep. It's not going to freak out and do all this weird stuff if it doesn't feel like it's in danger. And one of the ways that it does that is if you give it something consecutive, whether yeah. it's like your diet. You know, if you're eating at the same times every day for a certain amount of period, that's, that's your body's not going to freak out and hold on to food because no. it's like, well, hey, I've got this, I've gotten food at the pretty consi consecutively, consistently for the past however long. So I'm relaxed. I'm chill. It's the same with water like we talked about, you know. Yep. I, your body's not going to hold on to all this water if it says, well, I've been getting a gallon a day for the past three months. Like, I'll probably get a gallon a day today. So I'm not going to stay bloated and hold on to all this stuff and it's the same with your sleep your body's like well i've slept from this hour to this hour for the past however long so i'm not going to hike up my cortisol i don't have anything to freak out about nothing's probably wrong once yeah. you start interrupting those cycles then you're you start seeing these these hormones being released like your stress hormone and you almost see it more after you go for a longer period of time of doing something consistently oh, yeah. like nowadays if i miss a night of sleep or something's messed up. I almost think I feel it more than I would have back when my sleep was always all over the Me place. Me too, for sure. Right? You're like, wow, that's really a difference. <laughs> <laughs> I think the older I've gotten too, like, because I, you know, I'm, I don't think I was a morning person like that. Even though I woke up in, 
like 5.30 in the high school. I was in military school and like that. Still was a morning person. Yeah. <laughs> but now, I, I really do feel like that. Like, I don't care. Now, my, my schedule as far as waking up, I don't care if I go to bed at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm usually waking up like 6.30 Me too, the same time, yeah. No matter what. So, yeah. I, I really got to get my sleep better at night where I'm getting more rest. But at that point, like, you know, I, I think the older you get, the, the, the less sleep you possibly, possibly might get or... Yeah. There's different things, you know, too. It's just the morning. I'm, I'm more of a morning person as far as that goes. Like, I'm ready to go in the morning. just is what it is. Yeah, and I mean, your diet can affect your sleep, too. 100%. Carbs and serotonin work hand in hand. You know, the I always know when I'm, like, really lean, like, before a show, it's my, I'm waking up at, like, 3 in the morning, 2 in the morning. All <laughs> and I think it's my body's trying to be like, hey, like, time to get some food. Yeah. And I'm yep. like, no, not yet. <laughs> I, got a, I got a show, but... And that's what it is, man. So, you know, the biggest thing that I think that we're talking about here is get on a schedule. Don't stress all the time or try to find these stressors for sure that are going to help mm -hmm. you. If you think you have a cortisol issue or you're having these problems, go get proper blood testing, listen to a medical provider, look at all your options on the table, and try to do what's best for you. Yeah, and try to eliminate the things that are in your control first before, you know, just hopping on like sleeping pills and yes. things like that. Like, if you're really doing a diet that's good and you know, like, I'm not... I'm not out partying and I, I don't have any things that could really say like, this is definitely messing up my seat. Like, let's right. be honest with ourselves. Of course. If all of that's on point, you're living a pretty healthy lifestyle and you're still, you know, having these effects that we're talking about, that's probably when it's time to go see a medical professional yeah. um, and stay away from WebMD. Yes. <laughs> go go to somebody who can, who can go on your case by case basis. Yeah. If they need to do blood work, they can hear your symptoms. Then they can sit with you, like our doctors at Titan Medical, and yeah. figure out what's going on with you. Because what's going on with you is not the same with everybody. It's not the same with me or John. Yep. We're all different. Um, and this whole this whole fitness and health lifestyle is all on a it depends basis. <laughs> right? You know it what really I mean? Is. It is. So. It really is. And everybody lives different lives. So, you know, one stressor is different than the other exactly. stressor. People handle these different stresses in different ways. It's true. One so. thing, the same thing could happen to two people and it could be devastating mm -hmm. stress-wise mm -hmm. for, for that person and the other person could be totally fine about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And things that are out of your hands, you know, like try not to stress about it. I mean, I, you know, people turn on the news all day. They're like stressed about all these different things that they really don't have, you know, any say in or can't do anything about and they're mm -hmm. stressing the hell out of it. Yeah. So, Try to stay away from those things that are making you stressed out, too, as well. That's a big, big thing. Like if you Absolutely. keep going around toxic people or watching toxic things, that's how your mindset's going to be, and you're probably going to have these stresses that you can't even control. Right. It's the background effect. Like we were saying with the TV on when you're sleeping, it's the same with the, the people in your life that you're like, oh, they don't, they don't bother me. They don't bother me. It does. It takes a toll on you, whether you realize it or not. You know, yeah. you sit around in a room and you got the news telling you how terrible the world is and how it's going to end all day. If you hear that long enough in the background, if you're not paying attention, it might make you a little unhappy. Absolutely. It's just how. Absolutely. So don't ignore this kind of stuff. Some different things that possibly could help with, with sleep or with anxiety, because anxiety keeps a lot of people up too as well. Mm -hmm. So let's mention one of these different therapies. So one therapy that can definitely help you out that's a really natural thing, L-theanine, Yeah. right? So our Titan Serenity has L-theanine in it, which are precursor to GABA. GABA is what will put you in that trans five sleep. Mm -hmm. Magnesium. Yeah, yeah. Magnesium is a magnesium. big one, okay? So it'll help you relax. It should also help distribute hormones properly. And taurine. So taurine is great for brain function and sleeping at night. So taurine is great if you have dopamine deficiency. It'll help with that. That's another big one. Absolutely. For that's, sure. I mean, that's a big part of your motivation and um, pleasure responses and, and mood effects as well. Yes. So Titan Serenity, if you guys are looking for something like that, um, blood testing for cortisol, we can obviously help you out here at Titan Medical Center too. All you guys got to do is just call or text 727-389-3220. Talk to the medical providers. We'll do blood testing the whole nine and get you guys back on track. Hopefully feeling good. And then it's all on you guys. <laughs> yeah, then it's all on you guys. It's on you guys. You guys got to get into right places for yourself and get on a consistent schedule every day or try to. Yes, be good to your body. It's all you have. It's That's the it. most important thing. It is. It really is. You should be your number one investment. Absolutely. So I think that sums it up, Rachel. Yeah, that's great. It's been a time for bed. <laughs> <laughs> so this has been another great Titan at Time with Rachel Daniels. And John. Oh, thank you. I love you. <laughs> so we'll be back with you guys next week to talk about 
other great topics that I think you guys are going to feel interested in. Yes. And give a perspective from the athlete and our beautiful woman here. Oh, thank you. All right. <laughs> so we'll see you guys next week for another Tight Net Time with Rachel Daniels. Bye, guys. And girls. <laughs> What you, what you, what you, what you, what you, what you gonna do?